welcome where you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. Send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today our guest is a beautiful woman. Her name is Anne Perrote. She is family, couples, and an individual counselor. She's a life coach. She's an author. And by the way, she's the mother of 13 children. Yeah. yeah. So she has all these degrees, <laughs> and she stayed married to her lovely husband, John, of 43 years. They have 13 children, and let's just say she's been busy. Yeah. And so she's going to share her beautiful journey, her yeah. story with us. Uh, today and tomorrow, you are not going to want to miss this show. Right. And we say to all young couples out there, or you think, or you, you're afraid to get married, you're afraid to have children, we want to say what St. Pope John Paul said, don't <laughs> be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. And um, Anne's going to tell you the beautiful story, because you will miss the adventure if you're afraid. Yeah. And we were sharing at our anniversary that we spoke about on Monday's show that we just got with our children, our grandchildren, and just, just you know, poured out how great it is to be married and to welcome children in the midst of this children-denying culture so that they can catch the vision and mm -hmm. see the vision. And I said, you know, we're looking for happiness. And now you find happiness, you give your life away. You're not a narcissist just taking. You got to give your life away. Because those who give their lives away, you find your life. You want to lose your life? Just keep thinking about yourself. And, and God's you, designed marriage to do that, and children. To okay. make you happy. You know, because there are so many people out there, you're not happy. And one of the things we have to do is, at our, at our anniversary party, we had made up these cards from the catechism. Um, what's the most important question in the world? And then, you know, to know God, to love him, to serve him, so I could be happy in this life and to love and serve him yeah. in the next. Yeah. So that night, we didn't know this, another priest said that exact same thing in his sermon Saturday night. When we get to the party, I have all these cards out on the table. Yeah. And they're looking at me like, Nona, did you know the priest was going to say that? I didn't, but the Holy Spirit did. And it was all orchestrated. I had ordered those yeah. cards like two months yeah. in advance because I wanted them to have them for the kids. If you're looking for happiness, first you need to know God. Yeah. And don't be afraid. And everybody wants to be happy. I want to be happy, but you have to die to yourself. Yeah. And you have to live for Jesus. Well, Anne should be very happy. Y she is. She's married, 13 children. I don't know how many grandchildren she has because they're married 43 years now. So she should be one of the happiest people because if happiness is giving your life away, mm -hmm. she's done giving her life away. Yes. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest is Anne Pirate. She is family, couples, and an individual counselor. She's a life coach. She's a mother of 13, and she's the author of a beautiful book, Thriving and Surviving Raising 13. She's got a beautiful story to share with us, and this book is available at AnnePirate.com. Let's spell it, baby. A N N E. P like Peter, E R R O T T E T dot com. There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, Anne, we are so delighted to have you on at home. Thank we you. want you first to tell our family a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and your faith journey. Well, I went to a Catholic school, I was raised Catholic, and then during the 60s and the 70s, and didn't get a lot of spiritual and doctrinal formation at school or at home. But I went to daily mass because I thought, you know, that's what I needed to do to pray for things at home. So that was very important to me. 
And then one day we had a school assembly, a thousand students in the assembly hall. And the little nun up the top over the microphone says, there is one girl in this assembly hall who goes to mass every day because she has no friends. And the girl next to me said, and that's you, isn't it? And I said, well, half's true. I go to mass every day, <laughs> but I do have friends. Mm -hmm. But that, that was when I was in high school. So that, you know, squashed my faith a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when I left school, I, I met some people that had um, a lot of faith. They had a lot of knowledge. They were informed. And they lived the acts of piety. So they lived daily mass. They mm -hmm. lived the rosary, confession, regular confession reading spiritual books, something that give you, gives you uh, food for thought. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's what I want. It fitted me like a glove. And it was just so easy, it blended in with my day. Mm -hmm. And there I, I went from strength to strength with, um, with God's help and um, applied that to my life. And it, within that group of people, that's where I met my husband who was like-minded in our faith. And he wanted a large family. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought we'd aim for 10, but we, you know, with God's <laughs> grace, he, <laughs> we had 13. Um, so it's been an incredible adventure, as you were saying in your introduction. Um, you can't be afraid because you miss out on all the adventures in life. Mm -hmm. And some adventures are a bit scary and you have ups and downs. But that's life. That yes. is life. Yeah. Now tell our family, where are you from? We're not that from New Jersey, accent. are you in New York? <laughs> no, no, definitely no. not. Uh, we're from Sydney, Australia. And we've lived here for about nine years in Virginia. And then my husband retired, so we returned to Australia yeah. last November. Well, your book was delightful, Thriving Thank and you. Surviving, uh, Raising 13, just beautiful stories and vignettes and the joys and sorrows of, of marriage of a, of a large family. And you know, you started in your book, you, know, you, you used some good word pictures mm -hmm. you know, that just kind of stick out. And one of the key word pictures was the dollhouse. You know, yes, in your book, yeah. and from what I can remember about reading that, you speak about your own childhood, mm -hmm. which wasn't all roses for you, and uh, how much this dollhouse meant to you. I guess you won it as a prize at something, the dollhouse, how you would play in that dollhouse and play in that doll, and you, you wanted a house, you wanted a family, and then you met a friend, one of your first friends, mm -hmm. who had how many children? Fourteen. Fourteen mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then well, she's, which, I mean, she was a very popular girl because being in a large family, it gives them this innate sense of security mm -hmm. uh, and they know who they are. And, but she used to say to me, look, Anne, if I don't have any friends at school, they're all waiting for me at home. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I thought, oh, that <laughs> is the loveliest thing. And I wanted that for my children. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is true. I have seven brothers and sisters and I never, never did quiet in my life and I never did lonely mm. and that's the beautiful thing about having a family and so I, and I did quiet and, and lonely and that yeah. was a journey then you gotta marriage. bring that into the marriage right <laughs> yeah. that's another yeah. story exactly. yeah. 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 That's, that's another crazy. book <laughs> yeah that is another book but all your children mm -hmm. I mean you know and so many in this time and day and age mm -hmm. most Catholic families that we hear from and, mm -hmm. and with great heartache mm. that their children have left the church mm -hmm. they're not in the faith yes for a great, beautiful story of grace, all of your children are still in the faith. Mm -hmm. How did you think that happened? <laughs> well, firstly, I have to thank God for that mm -hmm. because I, I think we fall short of giving gratitude to God. And, I, and so we do. But I really accredit it to the rosary, to Our Lady, because we said the family rosary every night and I can't emphasize more strongly how important the family rosary is because as it says in the gospel, the family that prays together stays together through ups and downs. Life is not per perfect. It's like a, a bed of roses, but those roses have thorns mm -hmm. and the thorns deepen us and suffering deepens us. And if we reject suffering, we're, we're, we're rejecting the opportunity to deepen. And, I, and we shared that with our children. And um, we also didn't, we weren't Sunday Catholics. We, we went to Mass as many times as we could. We sent the children to schools that supported our faith most in, for the most part, but we didn't relinquish our responsibility for raising our children in the faith to the schools because that is mm -hmm. a big mistake that mm -hmm. some parents mm -hmm. may make. Um, so that was, we were the primary educators of our children. Yeah. And I think it comes back to the home 
And even if they do waver from time to time, they've got that anchor to draw them back because they've been given the truth. Mm -hmm. But in addition, I think parents also need to be informed and they, and they have to have the knowledge, they have to have, understand the teachings of the church, they have, they have to read the encyclicals and what you don't know, go and find out mm -hmm. because these days in particular it is very easy to find out um, what the teachings of the church yeah. are, particularly in light of all the mor um, moral and ethical issues that arise. Mm -hmm. In our family we had, um, we concentrated a lot around the dinner table and, and that came up because I wasn't coping with dinner time. I was dreading sitting down mm -hmm. with the children, mm -hmm. <laughs> looking at their manners, yeah. controlling everyone at the dinner table. So I thought, you have to be very innovative as a parent of a large family. So, well, what can I do to control these darling children? I thought, okay, I'll get the newspaper. So we got the newspaper, I censored things out, mm -hmm. and I said, every night, one of you children are going to take this newspaper, you're going to read an article and you're going to present it at the table. And everyone else will ask questions about that particular article. Mm -hmm. So it could be politics, it could be morals, it could be arts, it could be music. And I, then I relinquished and I said, okay, one sport article, but only one a mm -hmm. week, right? Because otherwise it'd be a sport article mm -hmm. every week, right? every day. <laughs> and uh, so that was good because they brought up issues that were controversial. And if they didn't, and there was something in the paper that was against the teachings of the church, we took control that night. We said, no, we, tonight we'd like to discuss mm -hmm. abortion, or tonight we'd like to discuss euthanasia or, mm -hmm. or drugs or mm -hmm. something like that. And so we would put it out there, we would say our bit, and ask them to contribute. Now we want to know what they think, mm -hmm. and therefore we have to be very open and not be scandalised by, oh, you don't think that, mm -hmm. do Because they won't tell mm -hmm. you anything. Mm -hmm. So they, they told us what, we, what they thought, and sometimes we'd play the devil's advocate mm -hmm. and we'd you know, push them a bit to get them to think, because the problem these days is that kids are not thinking right. critically. Mm -hmm. They're just sponges that are taking mm -hmm. anything in the status quo. Oh, okay, oh, that's a modern trend, let's go mm -hmm. along with it. Particularly in colleges and universities. They're supposed to um, you know, be a parrot they're not, there's not an, mm -hmm. a debate, there's not an ex intellectual di um, exchange of ideas. And therefore, they're not thinking deeply. Mm -hmm. Very few people think, you know, philosophically. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to educate in our, in our children. So, um, yeah, and, and they've learned a lot from that because, but, but to get to that point, you'll have to start young. And I think communication starts from the moment they're mm -hmm. little, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they feel confident and they're not gonna be judged their opinion is going to be respected valued mm -hmm. and and um, and they're given that respect in the family mm -hmm. that's so beautiful because you really took on being the domestic church yeah. right you yeah. said we are going to raise up these sons and daughters yeah. how many of them are girls and how many of them are boys we had eight boys mm -hmm. and five girls beautiful mm -hmm. and 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 so everything becomes a teachable moment it's so many times mm -hmm. there's so many incidences that are happening all day long we yeah. said okay we can make a teachable moment out of this a life mm -hmm. lesson but then you aggressively went after saying okay we're gonna do this this is gonna be part of our formation mm -hmm. um, and what a beautiful because like you did you taught them how to think you taught them how to speak publicly mm -hmm. you and they really were able to build confidence in an environment of love mm -hmm. you know just stop there for a minute because you know, I'm just thinking about how you and your husband John were mm -hmm. doing what you were doing the authority that you knew you had, mm -hmm. yet freedom and liberty. I'm just saying here, you know, I'm trying to put myself in the context of this culture where there could be so many people listening to what you're saying mm -hmm. and saying how oppressive that is and how you, you were, you know, like brainwashing, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which, which mm -hmm. our brains do need to be washed, by the way, <laughs> mm -hmm. like brainwashing, mm -hmm. because they're just waiting for the kids to say yeah. what they believe, yeah. if they're male or female, yeah. if they're whatever they are, and you wouldn't dare tell them who they are, mm, which, is, mm. which is really a form of... Mm. Child abuse. Really, you know, it, it really is, I, not mm. to say to people, 
this is who we are as human beings, yeah. you know? And even if they go off track or something, then say, make your case for what you believe and then let's talk about this mm -hmm. based on natural law and based on the scriptures and, and so on. Yeah. But you know, I mean, wow, what a different model. But I think <laughs> it's becoming more and more important as generations go on because now we have these gender issues, but that wasn't the case back mm -hmm. in my, in, when I was bringing right. up the children, we were bringing up the children. And technology too. Okay, we had one daughter that had a, a Walkman and she lost it, thank you God. Mm -hmm. But you know, we did, don't have the, mm -hmm. the, the problems that these younger parents right. do have these days. But you know, everyone is in search of the truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I think so. particularly young people, they, they don't know the truth, but when they hear it, mm -hmm. when they hear it, they know there's something special. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think if parents can um, form the children well in the home, yes. the child then becomes very secure very confident mm -hmm. in what they're being given in their direction and their conviction in life and they become natural leaders mm -hmm. because of that persona that they have created people come to them young their peers come to them even when they know that mm, maybe that that child's not the most popular or or, or disagrees with them you know in private they mm -hmm. will be approached mm -hmm. what do you think about it right. and even if they don't agree it gives them food for thought. Mm -hmm. The seed is planted. Right. Yeah. And the beautiful way to hear an opposing view. Just so that you could say, well, um, you, you give another human being the right to be heard yes. when you are being heard in the context of a family. That's right. You know, because you're respectful of other human beings, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. only can happen in big families like that. And with your intentional, you and John saying, this is going to be the domestic church. We are responsible mm. for raising up holy men and women of God. And it, it is our responsibility as parents. Was it a pretty smooth ride overall? I mean, it's sounding to some degree that you're sharing, you're modeling, they're accepting, they're receiving. Because I know in our family, I think we were doing the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it seems like each one of our kids, not naming names, <laughs> at some point, you know, kind of flipped a little bit or did something a little bit different and took a detour and, and you know mm -hmm. they will come back to it but mm -hmm. that's maybe that's part of the development thing like they got to challenge it a little bit yeah, yeah. did yours pretty they, much receive no, they, they were they were very good in that they understood the faith and they understood the morals and mm -hmm. they and they went forward of course people deviate and we all deviate mm -hmm. certain certain ways but for the most part they they, yeah. they kept to their convictions mm -hmm. because we Beautiful. did talk a lot to them about our own personal spiritual journey and we never pretended to be better than what we are. I have seen mm. cases mm. where <clears throat> parents do put forward this too good to be persona mm. and the children look and say I could never be Not like realistic. that. I might as well give up now. Mm -hmm. uh, I could never do that because my defects are very obvious to mm -hmm. my children mm -hmm. but in at Lent for instance I'd say to each of them, I said, I'm going to take each one of you aside and we're going to talk about what resolutions that you can make. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an idea because, you know, you, you're trying to refine their characters mm -hmm. and their personalities. Uh, anyway, then one of my sons says, Mum, can we do the same to you? There you go. And I said, totally, but in private so no uh -huh. one's embarrassed. Uh -huh. and, the, and the resolution he gave me was, Mum, I think you should try harder to listen to both sides of the story. Mm. And he was quite right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. with so many kids fighting and carrying right. on and doing right. their own thing, I go, okay, all of you, that's right. it. Right. Out, or, Everybody or in the <laughs> <laughs> But that was true, but that takes <clears throat> energy and that takes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, strength mm -hmm. and sometimes you're just over it. Yeah. yeah. No, and that is so true. We had one of those sons, it was our firstborn, who was the fair guy. Everything had to be fair, yeah. you know, and, and you do, <laughs> you have to, you know, that is not fair. And I I have the right to say this to you because I don't think that's fair, yeah, you yeah. know? And so it's like, okay, well, guess what? Everything in life isn't going to be fair, fair. No, you right. know? And yeah. it's not, and we're not going to live by our feelings. Are you feeling happy? Because if yeah. you're happy, then I'm happy. Yeah. Well, sometimes we're just not happy. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's okay. And yeah. sad and bad things happen mm -hmm. in a family, yes. right? Yes, yeah. And I think you can share that too. I mean, we share that with our children too. Uh, if, you, if you make a mistake, or say, oh, I did that. If you make a mistake and it's obvious to them, I think it's only just that you go and say, I did this. I am mm -hmm. really sorry I did that. And, you know, and we'll go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, learn from my mistakes, children. Right, <laughs> right. Well, my son used, I would put them to bed at night, you know, that magical moment when yeah. they're going to sleep and all, it's just lovely. And I would say, I'm, I'm so sorry that I yelled at you today and I lost my patience. And that firstborn turned around to me and he said, 
Mama, you always keep asking us to forgive you. When are you ever going to change? Yeah, when are you going to change? And I went, oh, I mean, it was <laughs> sore in my heart, but he was right. Because yeah. I was just, I'm sorry, it's I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. And I walked down those stairs, it was like, 10,000 tons on my feet. I was like, Lord, when am I ever going to change? But it was a, a teachable moment for me yeah. and a heart cry. Yeah. But that's how we do when we are real before them. Mm -hmm. And your stuff becomes their teachable moment yeah. to say, you know, my mom's just working this out too. Absolutely. She's on this journey of holiness with me. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to have to stop at this point. Thank okay. God you're coming back tomorrow because I have the feeling we just begun mm. to open the book, the story <laughs> of, of your precious, precious life. Thank it's you. It's Anne, A-N-N-E-P-E-R-R-O-T-T-E-T -E 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 dot com. You're going to want to go to the website, see all that's there. It's, it's a blessing. It's beautiful. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, now we have Father John Paul with us. Well, Father, what did you think of the beautiful things that Anne was sharing about her family? It was a lot of fun, I think, hearing um, a mother of 13 uh, talk about her experience as a mother thriving and surviving. Mm -hmm. It's a great title yeah. uh, for a book. That's, that's what it's about. Um, I think we're all meant to thrive, uh, not, just, not, not just to survive, but to thrive mm -hmm. within that. And... Uh, yeah. Just thinking about that, my aunt and uncle, my aunt Jeannie and Uncle Paul have 14 children, mm -hmm. um, 52 grandchildren. Oh my um, gosh. And two great grandchildren already. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm one of uh, 27 grandkids, mm -hmm. uh, number three in the line. So they had 14 kids. So I got to be very close to them yes. and their family growing up. Actually, before I entered religious life, I was able to spend a whole summer there working with my uncle Paul. Mm -hmm. And I got to be a part of their family, literally. Mm -hmm. um, breakfasts, waking up breakfasts. And there, a lot of the kids were out of the house at yeah. that point, but they were still working for mm -hmm. my uncle Paul as a plumber, some of them. Um, and it just it was a great experience. I always wanted to be a part of a big family. I think mm -hmm. my mom wanted to have a lot of children, but mm -hmm. I, I only have one, one uh, brother. Yeah. Uh, so just... Um, yeah, being part of a big family is special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's well, never dull. <laughs> no, it, it's never a dull moment. And we're not, perf mm -hmm. we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's perfect. There's no perfect family this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the beautiful thing, too, that we need to learn to forgive one another in family mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. when things come up a lot. Even, like, as Anne was talking about, even to have the humility to accept truth mm -hmm. from her children mm -hmm. yeah, that that's beautiful uh, when that happens and you shared experience too as well mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. place of confession and repentance right that's there right <laughs> it happens right before your eyes father sure. close mm -hmm. us with a prayer and a blessing sure family may the lord bless you and keep you and may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you may he show you his kindness and give you his <clears> peace <throat> may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful witness. Anne Perrote and her husband John, open to life, a beautiful family, the ups and downs of life, moving in the authority that God gives to parents to share the love of the Lord, the domestic church, the first place uh, of sharing about the Lord, of conversion, of evangelization. And they took advantage of that and did that. Mm -hmm. And now so many of their children are having children, generation to generation. And this is God's plan for the transformation of the world. A man with a woman, a woman with a man, be fruitful, multiply, fill the world, and subdue it. May the Lord give to our church first, the nation and the world, an appetite for children. Mm -hmm. Wanting children, loving children, welcoming children. And watch how you'll be transformed when you do that. Don't be afraid. Get married. 
answer your vocation as a priest, as a, as a sister, and be married to the Lord. Nobody, everybody has to be married one way or another. If you're single, you still got to be married to Jesus Christ. And that's, God portrays that marriage as one of the key metaphors for us to understand Christ's love for the church. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.